Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Commanding General, Brigadier General Jason Kelly, and the fellow commanders of our Navy, Commander of our Navy Air Force, welcome, welcome to the United States, States Army Training Center in Fort Jackson to the retirement of you, a one soldier. Congratulations, companies Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo from the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, 115th Infantry Brigade. Please stand in education given by Captain Martin Wilkes. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all the blessings that you continue to give us each and every day. As the soldiers graduate, bless them and their family members during this time of transition. Bless the soldiers with a fiery passion to continue to be disciplined, trained, fit, cohesive teams ready to win our future wars. We ask these things in the most holy and precious name, the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see here in the U.S. Building and Sheriff's Air Traffic as soldiers. This is you with the last official formation of the career of one lifelong soldier and one of the U.S. soldiers. Not that you want to successfully complete this difficult period of training. Are you able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier? But those who came in today represent discipline, motivation, physical and physical orders to exemplify the Army's seven core values loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the word ethos, display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never winning. And never leave you behind the fall of combat. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justified to be proud of our retirees and lifelong dedication to our nation, and are truly honored that the next generation of standing on this field and have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. Units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band, under the command of Chief Warren Officer 3, Kevin Fitt, graduating soldiers from Alpha Company and Bravo, the Battalion of Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from Companies Charlie, Delta, and Echo, identified by their distinctive headgear as drill sergeants. These dedicated non traditional officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on professional competence. Leadership, ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat, it is the important responsibility to avoid civilian men and women and soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Captain Esau Brown Jr., who serves as the executive officer of the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer of today's graduation is the commander of the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Brennan Bolter. On his left is Command Sergeant Andrew Anzola Fabio, the battalion's senior non commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander.
this time, the drill sergeant is cycle for Delta Company, 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Drill Sergeant Jonathan Aleko will recite the Drill Sergeant Creed. We ask that all Drill Sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the Drill Sergeant Creed. Soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company, Specialist Assault from Greenwood, New Jersey. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is Private Spearman from Fort Myers, Florida. Good morning, Left Head Dragons, and welcome to beautiful Fort Jackson, South Carolina, where we make American soldiers. It is an honor and a blessing to have so many family and friends to support our graduating soldiers today. We are not only celebrating those newly minted soldiers standing before us today, but also the Army's 248th birthday. The Army's storied lineage goes back to June 14, 1775, when the Continental Congress authorized the enlistment of riflemen to serve in the United Colonies. Thirteen months later, the U.S. declared its independence on the 4th of July, 1776. For the past 248 years, men and women like these before us have been willing to serve and sacrifice 
in order to win our nation's wars and ensure our way of life. Colonel Hutton, Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. Oaks, Mr. Edwards, Major General Harder, Brigadier General Bennett, families and friends of those graduating soldiers from the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, the Lette Dragons. Thank you for participating in today's graduation ceremony here on Hilton Field and virtually at home and across the globe. Today we bid farewell and safe travels to an outstanding American soldier, Sergeant First Class Bowman, as he retires from the Army. His commitment to his soldiers will have a lasting impact for years to come, and we cannot thank him enough for his 24 years of service to this great nation. I would also like to take a moment and extend my gratitude to three very important groups here, both here and online, our veterans, our retirees, and our Gold Star family members. Your sacrifices, both in and out of uniform, validate the importance of basic combat training. Your service and continued support to this great nation cannot and will not be overlooked. Please, if you are willing and able, stand and be recognized. Thank you. I would also like to recognize the 282nd Army Band. Your professionalism lends class and dignity to today's ceremony. Now let's. Now let's talk about why we're really here. To celebrate the accomplishments of these 380 newly minted American soldiers standing in this formation in front of you. They are all volunteer. They hail from almost all 50 states and territories. We have 19 countries represented in this formation from six of the seven continents. We still haven't had representation from Antarctica, one day maybe. These soldiers are the best the United States has to offer. On the field, we have a varied group. The oldest is Private Chapa, at 39 years old from our Alpha Company, and the youngest is Private Ashaya, at 17 years old from the Mandalorian Company, or Bravo Company. We have parents in the formation, 55 collective children in the crowd today. In Punisher Company, Private Crespo fled communist Cuba and is now a proud American, and Specialist Taylor is a junior Olympian in track and field. In the Mandalorian Company, we have a beekeeper, a musical therapist, and a concert percussionist. In our chaos company, we have a licensed pilot in Private Hoffman and a professionally trained WWE wrestler in Private Stanley. In Demon Company, Private Johnson is a junior Olympian for swimming, and Private Hussein is a junior Olympian in track and field as well. Lastly but not least, in our Echo Company, Private Davis is a three-time state marching band champion, and Private Allen is a special effects makeup artist, has been doing it for seven years. Why do they volunteer? Was it a sense of duty, a family obligation, or money for college? Was it, was it pride in their family to test oneself or to escape from a dark place? Whatever the reason, they now have one thing in common. They are all American soldiers. Since they arrived at Fort Jackson 10 weeks ago, I can report that your soldiers have learned to become proficient in the basic art and science of combat. They've learned how to get comfortable being uncomfortable. They learned the value of teamwork and trust, trust in themselves, their team, and their cadre. They face both mental and physical challenges. At times, they may have doubted their ability, but quickly learned just how capable they really were. They did this not by themselves, but under the watchful eyes of their drill sergeants and cadre. They did it as a team. Please join me in a round of applause for our soldiers, our drill sergeants, and our cadre. <laughs> Basic training is a continuous assessment. We look for the drive and determination in every soldier. You may have heard the words like the hammer, the anvil, and the forge. These single and multi-day field exercises were designed to test not only how well each soldier learned what was taught, but also their grit and ability to persevere and thrive in an increasingly rigorous set of conditions. In the forge alone, these soldiers covered over 35 miles on foot, starting with a 10-mile foot march with 40 pounds of gear on their backs. All successfully completed the arduous tests, proving their technical and tactical competencies to join our ranks of our profession of arms. 
Nothing was given to them. They had to earn it, and they did earn it. So now what? Some will go on to be helicopter mechanics, others intelligence analysts. Some will be religious affairs specialists and others communicators. Some will handle finance and play in the army band or become logisticians. Maybe some will join our nation's special operations forces. It doesn't matter what their MOS or military occupational specialty is. They are part of the greatest volunteer army the world has ever known. So, to the soldiers on the field, we are proud of you. We are honored to have been your first unit. You are our future, and without you, we have no army. Without you, we are incapable of promoting a peace through a strong national defense. However, with you, our future is bright. Ladies and gentlemen, those standing before you represent what is best about America. Thank you for celebrating today with us, and may God bless the United States of America. Always forward, strike strong, and just like we rehearsed it yesterday, victory starts here.
15, 1916 in the regular army in El Paso, Texas. Its initial mission included guard duty on the Mexican border and the training of National Guard units. In World War I, the 34th Infantry Regiment arrived in France on August 27, 1918. In October of 1918, the regiment received battle honors Lorraine for actions for their support of the 7th Infantry Division. After World War I, the 34th Infantry Regiment the first motorized infantry regiment in the United States Army. The regiment moved to Fort Jackson, South Carolina on 10th July, 1940. In route to the Philippines on 7 December, 1941, the regiment was diverted to establish the Hawaiian Island Defenses. In June of 1943, the regiment participated in 